Ayan, no? So, I have the privilege, um, once again, no? I think Pastor Bong was been, um, has been introduced earlier this morning, no? but I want, it's a privilege for me to introduce him once again, okay? <laughs> Kasi baka mamaya, there are other people here who wasn't here this morning. No? So, Pastor Bong Saking is one of the pastors of CCF and is a motivational speaker both in the Philippines and abroad. No, syempre, nandito nga siya sa Hong Kong. Eh, no? diba? Our speaker, he graduated cum laude no, with a degree in Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and is a certified public accountant. But take note, he is also taking up master's, his master's degree. Okay po ba yun? Galing, no? He has been invited to speak before the House of Congress, the PRC, the PNP, and other government agencies. At present, he leads the, the CCF Marketplace Ministries that serves both in private and government sectors. Now, I am so sorry, but he is married. So he's married na po. In fact, he has four children, of which two are twins. So it is a privilege for me to introduce, let us all welcome, Pastor Bong Saking. Good afternoon, everyone. Praise God. Uh, have you enjoyed your lunch? Were you able to receive the lunch packs given earlier? <laughs> there was none. <laughs> you you got me, huh? Meron pala? <laughs> no, it was... <laughs> Nagtaka ako yung mga mukha alam. Meron lang? Sa, saan yun? Saan yun? <laughs> Di ba? Wala po. Nagjo-joke lang po ako. <laughs> Itignan ko lang. Itignan ko lang po yung reaction ninyo. Now, may I know also who... Anyone from in this room who does not understand Filipino? Is there anyone? Oh, there were two of there. No, of our brethren who are there. Don't worry. You can ask the person next to you to interpret. Okay. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. <laughs> Vaughn will sit beside you to, to help you to understand. If ever I will say something that you that that I will be speaking in in a while, no, in a while, uh, in, just in case I would speak in Filipino, then somebody will help you to understand. Okay, okay, good. Now, actually, when I was younger, I was always dreaming to become wealthy. That was my dream. I want to become a multimillionaire, no? not in one, <laughs> but obviously I was. I really dream for that because. I grew up in a poor family. Uh, my parents were both government employees, and one is a military, and the other is teacher. Was a teacher. So at that time, we always we could not really imagine how we can really survive because we are nine in. I have six siblings, uh, no, eight siblings. No, so we're nine in the family. And aside from that, our relatives also are were staying with us. So we're twenty-four. Kami. In the house, 24. In fact, they, they, they notice that every time I eat, I always look for a chili. No? Because during that time, our ulam or our vayan would always be bagoong with chili. And a lot of rice. <laughs> Kasi ganun lang yung aming ano, pagkain. So, yun na po yung buhay namin. But little did I know that once you get, somehow you begin to earn it would not always be, it is not a guarantee that once you earn a little, or you, you will be satisfied with your finances. And this is what I learned. For example, in the U.S., there was a research done in the U.S., particularly in California, regarding their finances. Only 26% are satisfied with their finances. 26%. Very small percentage. 74% of the people who live in California are not satisfied in their finances. And it seems that no matter how much they make, it will never be enough. Never seems to be enough. Gallup released a poll that, was, that said 64% of the 
of all couples argue over money. Oh, di ba? Marami nag-aaway tungkol sa pera. It is a major issue of concern in marriages. That is finances. In fact, they discovered that is the number one cause of divorce. Pera. 54%, 54% of marriages divorce over money. It's almost as if the vows have been changed till death, till death do us part. Pag nabao na sa utang. Ano? So J.C. Ryle said this. Sabi niya, two-thirds of the strifes, quarrels, and lawsuits in the world arise from one simple cause, money. Now, how many of you Uh, know someone who has that kind of problem. They always argue about the issue of money. Diba? Talaga, many people are having can, that kind of pi- problems. Many of them are friends and they became enemies because of money. No? They were once best of friends. Not until um, a money became an issue. Diba? Somebody, your best friend, did not pay, your, did not pay his debt. Diba? So you got angry. So, the entire life, lagang there's a great tension about money. Many people lived under stress about this issue. So, I'd like to just remind you this. The Bible tells us that it is vain for you to rise up early and to retire late. Because many of us here are very stressed, working so hard just to earn. And the Bible is saying, to eat the bread of painful labors. But the promise of God is that He gives to his beloved even in his sleep. <laughs> What a promise, di ba? Ang sarap. Yung iba naman, tulog ng tulog, obviously. Yeah? Obviously, if you're always sleeping, you cannot earn anything. But some, they just keep on working, thinking that they will earn because they are hard working. Di ba? So during the service, they sleep. But, <laughs> kanina yon, kanina umaga yon. Hindi ngayon, nakita ko naman. Eh. Normal. Okay, don't worry, no? If you feel you feel, ano, parang if you're sleepy after eating, that's normal. Because that's part of the effect of the digestive system, no? Kasi talagang yung, once the insulin kicks out, your body collapses para to rest. So that's part of the digestive system. So don't worry if you are sleepy. I myself am sleepy. <laughs> Kasi I just finished my lunch. Anyway, so ito na po. So God is a God of order. He has You know, God wants us to understand principles on really how to gain and to really enjoy God's provision. He wants us to be wealthy. So when my dream became wealthy and I became a pastor, I wanted to pass on such dream to people. Not because I want you to be greedy. I want you just to enjoy the blessing of our God. Okay? Now, listen. Listen. You see, God doesn't want us to live a life full of worry. You know, the Bible tells us this, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or wealth at the same time. Then how would you know whether you're serving God Or mammon. Maybe you are saying, well, anyway, I serve the Lord. In fact, I always attend CCF services. Diba? That's not the point. You will know whether you are serving God or wealth by just looking at how you worry. Alam nyo yan? Tinan nyo, The continuation of this passage is in verse 25. Look at what it says. For this reason I say to you, Do not be worried about your life and as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Do not worry then saying what will we eat or what will we drink or what we will wear for clothing. For the Gentiles, in other translation, for those who do not know God, this is what they are seeking. Yeah, they eagerly seek all these things, food, clothing, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all of this. Yeah, amazing, no? If you want to understand whether you're serving God or money, when the moment you are always worrying about food, worrying about what you will wear, worry, then you are more concerned with wealth more than God. 
then you can easily see, ah, I really feel that I'm one of the most, uh, I'm one of the wealthiest person on earth. Why? I rarely worry. Kaya alam ko mayaman ako ngayon. Unlike before, I have money, but I'm always worried. Now, I still have money, but no longer worried. But not much money, ha? enough lang. How would I know na hindi na ako nagwa-worry? Hindi ko siya iniisip. I just let the money think about me. Okay ba? Are you following? No, I want you to experience the same. I want you to focus on God. That's why among Christians, the Christians were challenged to seek first God's kingdom instead of seeking money. Seek God's kingdom. Seek His righteousness. And His promise is that everything we need, all these things, shall be added unto you. Who will add? The king. Because that's his concern. Our concern is to follow his order. Our concern is to follow what he wants. Back in the Philippines, the price of gasoline is always increasing. No? Tunod, tunod. And the common question that they, I used to hear is whenever somebody would ride with me and say, aren't you worried about gasoline? Of course not. Why will I worry about gasoline? My worry is where will God send me to minister and let God worry about the gasoline? Nakuha niyo ba? Andiyan pa kayo? You see, people who are always worried about, how, about material possession, they forget that God alone can provide. Okay, this is something that I, how I wish to share with you. Okay, we need to build a solid foundation on our finances. So that's what we're going to discuss today. Let's build a solid financial foundation. No? I've been, I know that most of you, you are working so hard, and maybe some of you even left your own family just to work so hard, making sure that you can provide for the needs of your family. Diba? Uh, tama ba? Kaya, and yet, when you, when you look at your finances, seemingly parang kulang pa rin. Parang seemingly parang you've been working so hard and yet still lacking. You still have, you need still some more, more, more. Kaya, ano talagang problema? So remember this, God wants you to be wealthy. Not because He wants you to have more money. He wants you to have no stress or worry. Okay, man? When I say wealthy, it is not measured by money. It is measured by our attitude towards it. When we are focused on God instead of our material needs, then we are wealthy. Are we following? Uh, don't ever cut my message and say, look at this guy. He's a prosperity teacher. Diba? He's focused on money. No, that's not the point. When I say wealthy, it is worry-free kind of life. Are you following? Now, because you may be wealthy in terms of material possession, but you're still poor because you're always worried. So, let's remember the word wealth. 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 So how will you measure wealth? Wealth is not measured by how much money you have, but how much of your money have you. Okay ba? If you want it to be more grammatically correct, how much money or how much of your money has you? Nagkakanindihan? Yun tanong natin. Does your money have you? So that's a question. So remember, wealth, wealth. Number, letter W, that's an acronym. So may kli lang yung ating pag-uusapan. Wealth. Wealth comes and belongs to God. So you need to warn yourself that wealth comes and belongs to God. This is the first principle that we should remember. The principle of ownership. Who owns what you have? Remember that God is our source. Remember that God is our supplier. God supplies everything that we need. In fact, Paul said, My God shall supply all your needs. Can you imagine? He was definite and he was certain that my God shall supply. He didn't say may supply. No, shall supply. Some of your needs. No, all your needs. All your needs. 
I mean to say, even the amortization of my house, as long as it is your need, God shall supply. I mean to say, even my false state, yes, if it, you need it. As long as you need it, the Lord will provide for you. My God shall supply all of your needs, not greeds, needs. That is His promise. I mean, according to the riches of Hong Kong. Can you mayon? No. According to His riches. Di ba? Sa Tagalog, ang ganda. Ayon sa kanyang di maubos na kayamanan. Grabe, no? In other words, according to the wealth that you can never consume. Ganong katindi yung yaman. Anong sabi ng sa Lord? As according to His riches in Christ Jesus. In other words, you can only have that that promise is not for everybody. To all, to those, oh, this promise is only to those who respect and honor Jesus, who are in Christ Jesus. Are you following? So that is his promise. So the first principle is that this is back because, because this is very critical in our I know, financial foundation. If we forget this, we're going to live with financial tension in, in our entire life. So, kailangan maintindihan natin kaagad yan. So, remember this. Your work or business is not your source. Your saving is not your security. You can lose all in many ways. The Lord can take any of that at any moment. Remember Job? In one day, he lost everything. In one day. So, we can, can never be proud and say, Well, I know I can now rest and enjoy my day because I have lots of savings. No, anytime. If you're, you think na, for example, naalala ko yung, ano natin, yung banko, banko matibay, banko Pilipino, asa na? Nawala, naiwan yung Pilipino. The bank is gone. Diba? Kahawa. Diba? Parang, kaya napaka-importante that we should remember, remember this. Not our salary, not our children are the source of our security, but God. Because we can lose all of them instantly. Anybody want to give, for example, uh, a, a story of all of this? Some people, they thought, well, this is our future, my son is so intelligent, but died right? in an accident. So you cannot hold, nobody knows what the future holds. So if you think or if we think that our source is ourselves and our, the people that we, that we see, we are mistaken. We need first to realize that our God is our supplier. Deuteronomy tells us this, Always remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So what does it mean now? You need first to to honor Him and make sure that we are in a right relationship with God. Because can you imagine if your source is someone you, you are not in good terms with? Tipatay ka. Diba? Parang you don't have any security kung kagalit mo yung supplier mo. Kaya you better have a right relationship with your supplier because for sure, you will find favor from Him. Okay, Ben? This is something we should never forget. Our ability to earn. If He's our ability to earn, then we can ask Him for advice. And ask Him, Lord, grant me pieces of advice that I may know how to earn more, how can, uh, to earn better. Diba? Kasi hindi natin hawak yan eh. Even when you have customers, for example, if you are a businessman or a woman, you pray to God, Lord, bring somebody to, 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 ano, to be my customers. It's not the frog that will bring in the customer. Diba? Misa, krak, krak, gaganun pa eh. Iba naman, kailangan pa ng ganun. Para people will come. No, you don't need to use all of those. Diba? Those are not the same. Pinalalayo nga niya eh. Alis kayo, wag dito, wag dito, wag dito, ganyan. Diba? Kasi if those are true, for example, the mga lakit, remember, sabi nila, naalala ko pa, malas daw yung nasa interest, ano yung tumbok, yung bahay, tumbok. How do you say that in English? <laughs> Nga? Ando? O, kayo nang bahala mag-interpret. <laughs> 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 when your house is 
no, fronting the road. So the car would hit you, right? something like that. Okay? They would say, that is, ano, uh, what they call it, curse. That's a curse. Right? Malas. Right? That's, there, there is a curse in that kind of ano, uh, kumbaga, setting. And you know what? I said, no. What is malas is when you don't have a house. <laughs> when you don't have a house, obviously, that's, right? that's a curse. It's better to, be, have, to have a house front, fronting the road than to have no house at all. Whew. <laughs> Hirap, ah. Kala niyo, dali, ah. Is it? <laughs> Parusa talaga, no? <laughs> Natumbok ba? No. <laughs> diba? Okay, let's continue. So understand this. God wants us to be productive. If God gives us the ability to gain, to gain wealth, then God wants us to be productive. So Get inspiration from the Lord. So I encourage you, you welcome your day with, from, as in with, with reporting, ano, ano, attitude to the Lord. And say, God, thank you for this wonderful day. No, hindi yung, hey, ano ba yan? One hour more, one hour. Huh? Sometimes we wake up with an alarm clock. When we are not happy when the, alar- when the clock alarms. And very alarming. <laughs> Wala, doon pa lang malas ka ni. You know, that, alone, that alone, that experience somehow start, gives you a wrong start in your day. So just to wake up, thanking the Lord for giving you again another day to be productive would be more inspirational. Tama? Can you start today? Understand, Lord, now that I know, so I would listen to you, I would have my quiet time, I would meditate on your ways, and your, because I'm excited on what you will be revealing for today. I'm excited of what you will allow me to pr- produce for today. I'm excited to work for you, my God, because you are the one who gives me the ability to earn. Nakuha niyo ba yan? So you're excited to work. Yung iba pag-iisip lang, isang trabaho na itong mga Ano gusto mo? Huh? Kaya, di ma, kay, have you noticed that even here in Hong Kong, when you have a customer, they're talking, oh, what do you want? What do you want? And all of a sudden, they will not buy. Humayos ka dito! Get out! Get out! <laughs> no, because they're not inspired to work. They're not willing to serve because they never see it as an opportunity to serve God. They're thinking of serving themselves. Kaya, when we, we understand that our ability to earn comes from the Lord, then we should be excited to perform whatever God wants us to do. Amen po? Can you imagine, no? Uh, parang our ability to reach, our ability to speak, our ability to see, those are from the Lord. Those are from the Lord. Some people, they see opportunity. Some, they see problems. So may, ask the Lord, Lord, grant me the ability to see opportunity more than problems. Okay ba yun? I remember there was a guy who was sent in, some, in Africa and they were actually selling shoes. And the guy said, oh, how, how are you there? So what do you think about the business of shoes there? Oh, no one is wearing shoes here. So we, we have no market. He did not see the opportunity. Then they sent another guy. Then they called up again. Oh, how is it? Yeah, it's true. No one is wearing shoes here. We have a great opportunity to sell shoes. Iba, no? They saw the upper instead of problem. God alone can do that. Mas matindi isa. Well, that's not only the opportunity we have. There's, lo- there's lots of, uh, they have lots of leather supplies here. There are lots of wild animals. We can also get Raw materials at a very cheap price. But dami nang nakita. Nakuha ninyo? So, we ask God for opportunities. Ask God for wisdom. Everything comes from God and everything exists by His power and everything is intended for His glory. You see, what we think we own is really on loan. Those are just given to us and trusted to us by the Lord. And one day we will give also an account on how we have used what God has entrusted us to have. Okay, Ben? So, remember the, the owner or manager principle. 
When you feel that you're the owner, you're possessing something. But the manager managing and taking care of something for his owner. Diba? When we think we're owner, we are in charge. But when we understand that we're managers, we have been put in charge. You see, when we are the owner, ac accountable to ourselves, but when we are manager, we are accountable to our master. You see, when we think that we're owner, we're doing the job with self-interest in mind. But when we are a manager, doing the job with the best interest of our master, it is for his glory. It is harder to let go when you are the owner. But if you are the manager, constantly prepared for someone else to take over. Mas relax ka. Nyari, I, sometimes we will even manipulate the situation to keep the job for ourselves. But unknowingly, if you understand that you're just being entrusted, God can even transfer you anywhere else at, that, at any moment without ill feelings towards your co-workers who is being promoted or to substitute you in your position. Bakit? Because you still believe that God has his best interest, has, has his your best interest. So he will bring you to where you will be more effective. Okay, well, Di ba mas exciting yan? You, sometimes we feel like this is the only hope we have to walk in, work in Hong Kong, walk in Hong Kong, work in Hong Kong. I don't want to go back to the Philippines, only in Hong Kong. What if God tells you, no, go, go back to, Hong, to the Philippines? No, 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 no. No, uh, without you knowing that when you get back to the Philippines, you will, as, as you dig your own house to, to build your own house, you, you all of a sudden discover there's a, uh, I know, a well of oil under your soil. Oh, di ba? Oh, di ba? <laughs> Only God understands. Kaya, just follow the Lord's leading. Remember, He owns you instead of owning yourself. The word is this, money does not corrupt everybody, but the love of money corrupts anybody. Okay, Bayan? You see, for the love of money, money is not a problem. It is the love of money. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. If you think money is the root of all evil, give them to me. Okay? It is not the money. It is the love of money. Okay? So all, some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Many could not attend services. They could not attend, for example, D group. All because of work, 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 work. As if the work depends on them. I'm not saying that you will be absent in your work or to be irresponsible in your work. But sometimes, given a chance, talking to some, just imagine this. If let's say you are working and you're, you have a business transaction of about a million, a million transaction deal, a million deal, and you will meet him in the church, will you come and worship? Of course. Not because of the Lord, but because of the deal. <laughs> Tama ba? Or if what, if what if I tell you that every time you come here, I'll give you 1,000 Hong Kong dollar? I believe every Sunday you will be present. <laughs> diba? So what does it mean? You worship money more than God. Okay, when the children are asked to do the assignment in their, in their school, secular cl classes, and compared to the assignment given by the Sunday school teacher, obviously they will prioritize the, the assignment in the school. No, walang grade dyan sa Sunday school. You better focus on your assignment in school. But the problem is this. What are you teaching your children? Diba? Materialism. So remember, warn yourself that everything we have is not our own. They belong to Jesus. Letter E. Exalt God with your wealth. The primary calling of Obviously, the law of honoring God first. Exalt God with your wealth. Since it is His, our first attitude was always be to put God as our priority in terms of our budgeting, in terms of the use of our money. Hindi, ano ba number dito? Amazon? Sa Pilipinas, Shopee. Ang Lazada. Di ba? Ha? Taupaw? Taupaw? O patay, taupaw. <laughs> Di ba? Hindi, sa totoo lang. 
most of the time, we forget about our money, that the money belongs to God because of Tao Pao. In sa Pilipinas, na, nagsiservice, maririnig mo, you will hear people, Shopee! <laughs> During the service, Shopee! <laughs> Grabe, dito walang ganun, no? wala naman Tao Pao. Tao <laughs> During the, uh, imagine, during the D-group meeting, shippy. Like, oh, may announcement, pay. Uh, and every, and sometimes, we spend so much with Shopee or Taupao without even considering whether, this, is this really pleasing to the Lord or not? Diba? Like, uh, that's the greatest challenge. You see, we have talked about this, you know, maybe you have heard of this many times in the past, that what God wants us to understand is this. We are to honor Him from our wealth and from the first of all our products. So our barns, look at the promise, so that our barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. What does this proverb is saying? What, what, what is he trying to say? Here is the promise. He will provide, He will fill our barns as in will, and I'm with overflowing supply, but we need first to trust God for our wealth. So the first part of our wealth, first part, huh? in other words, before you spend about anything, about spending your money to anything, you first think of honoring God. You know, una ka God. How will you honor God? Diba? Papano? Now, the Bible tells us this, honor God by giving Him the first part of your income. Or well, how would you know the first part of your income? Diba? In the scripture, we often hear these words, tithing. And, uh, ayan na naman, tithing na naman. Now, if you get offended with the issue of tithing, then it only means that your money is your God. Kasi ba't ka, there is, pero if you are reacting to that, there is something wrong about it. Look at this. For example, when you go to the doctor and he will poke part of your body and say, is this hurting? Is this hurting? When you say, oh, ba? once you feel that way, in other words, there is something wrong in that particular part of your body. Tama ba? So whenever you're discussing about tithing and you become sensitive about it, there's something wrong about your attitude towards money. Okay, Ben? But, uy, pero na naman. Compare to, huh? Huh? Then there's something wrong about your attitude. There's something wrong about your heart. Because tithing, the real purpose of tithing, God doesn't need our money. The real purpose is this. The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. Yun ang test. Kaya the first 10%. Why 10%? Why not 1? Why not, but why, why not, why not 20? Why not, why 10? Because the truth is this, can, God can ask 100%. He can ask 50%. But they just ask 10. And why 10? I don't know. You asked him. <laughs> For some reason, he was the only one who said that you give 10. But that's according to the proportion of your income. Ako, I don't really know. The only thing that I know, he said it in his word. For example, in Malachi, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Um, yeah. So that there may be food in my house And test me now in this Says the Lord of hosts If I will not open for you the windows of heaven And pour out for you a blessing Until it overflows Amazing Bring me to the storehouse Parang even the place He mentioned exactly where you should bring it Even You bring it to the storehouse In other words, to your worship place Wherever you're worshiping, you give it Okay ba yun? Nawawala yung mic, no? Ayaw niya ng tithing. <laughs> Sensitive. <laughs> the, the reason I'm telling you this, dito lang, you don't need to be forced to give. It's between you and the Lord. That's why here in CCF, we do not pass baskets. We do not, it's up to you. I, we'll just teach you the principle. If you don't give, it's okay. It's between you and God. But I'm just telling you, God wants us to honor Him with the first fruit. In other words, the first 10% of our income, whatever it is, we give it to God. And alam niyo in the New Testament, there were no more tithing. It's all things. 
Ha? Mas malala! <laughs> yes, of course. Remember in Acts, they were giving everything they had. But it was not compulsory, ha? Kasi na, sabi nga, remember si Ananias and Sapira? Sapira had a problem with Pira, remember? <laughs> See, they were claiming that they had given everything, but the, the truth is they were just giving a portion. And Peter said, you, you're still honest. You don't need to give everything. You just need to be honest. Why are you lying against the Holy Spirit? So what God is saying, I'm not requiring you to give everything, but your attitude should always be everything is yours. So if I tell you to give a portion, like a 10%, why will you complain? I'll take care of you. It's just a matter of understanding whom you trust, your money or God. Diba? Ever since, since I came to know the Lord, the Lord never failed providing for us. I trusted God for everything. In fact, I give more than 10. I'm not telling you this, Pastor. You're, wow. No, it was just a discipline that as I was growing, the Lord is increasing also my giving. And I praise God for that. And I would experience a lot of miracles in my life because God is true to His words. He honors Him. He will also honor. I experienced one time, I, was, I went to the U.S. and God inspired me to attend a certain seminar. Can you imagine? I was in Canada, and the Lord somehow impressed upon me, go to Chicago and attend the seminar there. I said, Lord, where will I stay? I don't know any place in Chicago, but I still obeyed. So I went, I went to ano, Chicago, and I stayed in O'Hare Hall Airport. I don't know where to stay. Can you? Then, as I was waiting, somebody was calling me up. So I go, who is this? And it was um, a Philippine number, so it's, Again, roaming, international roaming. And alam nyo naman, it's expensive, di ba, to receive calls from the Philippines using your international roaming. And I said, no, Lord, I cannot answer this. But again, the, the call is ins very insistent. So I answered. So I go, hello? How, uh, yes, how can I? Oh, Pastor Pong, I need help. Yeah. Why? I go, how can I help you? You see, my son has a problem. We need some counseling. So, okay, where is your son? Oh, in Chicago. Chicago? I go, I'm here in Chicago. Oh, really? Okay, where are you staying? Here in the airport. <laughs> okay, wait, don't worry. I will call my son so that you will have time to talk with him to fetch you. And you can stay in his house. Is that true? <laughs> so, no, so, so in other words, the, 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 the guy fetched me at the airport. So I went and stayed with them. Again, then, but of course, the seminar is still far away from their place. So after our counseling, he brought me to the venue of the seminar. There, I saw Pastor Peter and some other CCF pastors. I wasn't a pastor yet in CCF. I was just a guest, okay? So sabi Pastor Peter, oh, why don't you join us? Stay with us. Oh, so I stayed with them in the hostel, hostel. There was a hostel there and I was roomed with Pastor Joby. So you know Pastor Joby? So I stayed with Pastor Joby in the room. I didn't know that there is a, a no, person that, that you have to pay for your stay there. So at the last day of our stay, Pastor Peter, okay, guys, you better pay now your dues. Oh no, where will I get the payment? I go, I was praying. Pag pinapawisan na ako. I said, Lord, why did you put me into this on the spot? Sabi niya. And you know what happened next? Oh no, 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 don't, don't ask payment from Bong. He's a special. Oh, a special kid. <laughs> Has a special need. <laughs> so, they did not charge me. Now, so since that was our last night, our host said, Okay, I already hired a limousine for you so that you can experience limo. Limousine pa? Who will bring you to the airport? Oo nga pala, I forgot about that. Would you believe? Okay, bong ha? Tomorrow, they will fetch you at around 5 a.m. To, to ride on a limo. Why limo? Nipatay ako dyan, mahal yan. Ito na. Sabi ko, Lord, I have no choice. I will use my credit card. You pay for this, okay? So when... I got to the limo, one of, our, one of those delegates came and said, Pastor Bong, can I ride with you? Oh, sure, sure. I'm on my way to the airport. Yeah, I'm too. I too, will, I'm going to the airport. Okay, come John. When we were there, we were talking. And then, Pastor Bong, is it all right if I pay the fare? 
Of course! <laughs> but of course, I, was, I did that in a very gentle manner. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> you see, our God is true to His words. He honors His words. He's faithful to His words. So I got back home as in everything was paid in full. Okay ba yan? Don't, don't need to worry. I really worried a little. <laughs> because ikayo kaya. <laughs> but of course, God is good. So when I experienced that, I said, God, you are wonderful. You're amazing. Diba? You're indeed amazing. So friends, when will you give? So you give it to the place where? In the storehouse. In the storehouse, a full tent. That is tithing. You know, give. You tithing means 10%. So give the tent to the whole floor. Now look at this. When he said to the storehouse, this is where you worship. Because primarily, the tent is for the workers and the work of God. Diba? So that they can do the work of the Lord. Diba? The place where we stay. Now, right now, the, this venue is being, the, the, the tithes of, of the members that they gave, it's being used here. Were you charged when you came in? Oh no! Hindi ba naman niya? Hindi, wala. Meron bang naniningil sa pinto? Wala. Later, when you go home. <laughs> Dara, just kidding. <laughs> joke lang, joke lang. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, when will you give? Now, look at this. On the first day of every week, it, God is giving us a very clear instruction. Put aside some of what you have earned during the week and use it for the offering. The amount depends on how much the Lord has helped you earn. Obviously, 10% is proportionate, di ba? If you earn more, it's still 10%. If you earn less, still 10%. It's still proportionate according to your income. Tama ba yan? Yeah? On the first day of every week. And you know what? Many people were attacking this issue of tithing and they were saying that an Old Testament principle. But you know, surprisingly in history, those people whom, who obeyed the Lord in this without even trying to analyze or to be logical or to be doctrinally as in ano, strict about the issue, they were blessed. For example, there was a young boy who ride on a certain boat because he went to the U.S. To, to find a greener pasture. And this boy who happened to be an orphan, and the ship captain said, you know, I'll just give you a piece of advice. Remember this, whatever you earn, you will be great in producing soap, producing anything that will, for, for cleaning. I mean, but one thing you should never forget, every time you earn something, just give 10% to the Lord. And you know what happened? God blessed that guy. And up to today, because of his blessing, we are still experiencing portion of his blessing. And you know why? Because he is William Colgate. Grabe! Imagine before we just brush our teeth with salt. <laughs> now we have toothpaste. It was him who promoted that kind of detergent to clean our teeth. And we are using Colgate Family. God blessed him so much to the point that he was giving no longer 10%, but it grew to 10%, 20%, to even 100%. Because he doesn't need the salary anymore. He was so rich to give everything to God. Not only him, even this guy. Do you know him? Henry Crowell, the founder of Quaker Oats. He was always sick. He was sickly. He was, and he prayed to God, Lord, give me health. I cannot preach the way D.L. Moody does, but I can support the ministry. Diba? Kaya the Moody Bible Institute was established because of him. Diba? All started by 10% until he gives 100% of his income because he doesn't need edit anymore. Amazing. Ito, mas malala. Do you know this guy? J.L. Craft. The Kraft Gen Foods. Remember the Kraft Eden Cheese? Oh, di ba? Itong guy na to, when he was working, he was losing. And he was talking to his horse. You know, I don't want to continue with this business anymore. Uh, we're losing. And the horse, ah! <laughs> yeah. I, now I realize what's wrong with this business. God has never been our partner. Then he started by saying, God, from now on, this business I dedicate to you and you will be my senior partner. So everything I earn, I'll give to you the, your portion. So from there on, look at this. Up to today, that's, that business still exists. 
Di ba? Grabe. Eto, I met the relatives of this guy. In his book, Proving God, Al Taylor tells the story of Al Arlie Rogers and Selma, California, who came to be known as the Sweet Potato King. Because of the vast farming operations in the San Joaquin Valley, Arlie and his brother first arrived to California with little money. By scraping and saving, they finally managed to purchase a farm. At that time, the money crop was cotton. And so, the two brothers invested every penny they could, they could get in sowing, cot in sowing cotton. When the cotton plants were, were just out of the ground, a great sandstorm blew through the valley, destroying everyone's crop. The, bro uh, the Rogers brothers were disconsolate. Arlie called the church and asked their pastor to visit. And the pastor, Barham, walked across the devastated fields and the brother poured out their troubles. Everything we had was in that crop. We don't have any money or credit left to replant. We are completely ruined. Now we will lose everything. Yun ang sinasabi niya. But the pastor knelt down and prayed, Lord, I know these guys, they are titers, and you promised that you will rebuke the devourer. May you allow their plants to rise again, just as you have ano, brought Jesus back to life in three days. And true enough, on the third day, the plants grew again. And they were able to survive. Not only survive, they became the sweet potato king because they changed their crops after so many years with potato. They're supplying sweet potato in the U.S., especially in Fresno area. I met the wife. Personally, the, 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 the nephew, I met him and I stayed in their house. So that's where I learned the story. Because I go, even if you say that it's no longer for the New Testament church, ah, it's okay with me whether you believe it or not. But one thing for sure, these people who understood and believed and obeyed the Lord without much anal uh, analyzing every uh, no details about the tithing issue, they just believed God, they honored God with their wealth, and God blessed them. Okay ba yun? Kaya, learn, learn to trust the Lord. Now, so, letter A, uh, uh, as in, uh, accumulate money righteously. Save money. As in, in other words, God wants us God, to accumulate, but in a righteous way. We have to earn in a righteous way. We have to learn how to use God's money in a righteous way. Did you know that God commands us to save our money? Now, yung saving does not mean that we have lack faith. No, we need to learn to save. God wants us to save. In fact, even Joseph was instructed by God to save whatever earnings they have for the next seven years. Diba? Because there would be a famine coming. So they had to learn to save. This is what God says. The wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. And the common complaint of most people, we don't have enough money to save. No, you don't understand. God provides for what we need. For sure, He will also provide for our savings. I know. And this is the principle I taught my children. I told them, remember this principle. 10 one one one. Ano yung 10 one, one, one? Here's the principle. Yes, every 10 pesos you earn, set aside 1% for the Lord. The 10%, 1 peso for the Lord. Kasi 10%. Then 1% for your emergency savings. And 1% for your investment savings. O, di ba? And amazingly, that's my principle in life. Whenever I have, I said, I have no money because the savings was set aside. But I am not enslaved by my savings because whenever God asks for those savings, I easily give them to the Lord. Now, when, when the groundbreaking of CCF for, the, for the, our building, at that time, I was already kicked out from my previous ministry because they keep on telling me that I'm an actor more than a pastor. <laughs> so I said, they told me this. So when I was now in the CCF, I said, and at that time, the only car I have is the car that my wife is using. So, so I had to commute. You know, amazingly, we were 
ano, saving money for a car, for the ministry. And as I was, we were doing that, during the break, ano, groundbreaking, during the groundbreaking, the Lord impressed upon me, give me your savings. Huh? Lord, <laughs> you Every time we have to start a, a building project, once the building is done, we, get, we have problems as in division, one church to another. We're always having church split. And I had been to several churches in the past. Now here again, building project. It's, ayoko na, I don't want to get involved with that anymore. But some of God was telling me, look at this. So when I look at Pastor Peter, and I saw Jim Welchel on the other side, and there was a rainbow. Yeah, then I look at the right, at the left side of my, on my, on my left side, I saw Avalon Zoo. It was like a Noah's Ark. So I go, wow. Here is Pastor Peter, Chinese, and here is Jim Welchel, American, as in East meets West. In a new beginning, there was a rainbow. And here is the Avalon Zoo, the Noah's Ark. And God was saying, this is a new beginning. Forget about the pain of the past. Okay, Lord. One condition. If I call my wife, and oftentimes whenever God challenges us to give our savings, and I will tell my wife, he will, she would always respond by saying, why? Sa Tagalog, bakit? Diba? Kasi, he asked savings, yung savings namin for the house, he asked from, for it. Yung kochi namin, he asked for it. Then we gave. Laging, bakit? Bakit? Ganyan. This time said, okay Lord, if my wife tells me, bakit, it's not your will. <laughs> oh, di ba? Simple lang. So I called up my wife. So I was retired. Remember the money we're saving for the car? Yes. Anya. Please bring it to the office on CCF and we will give it to the building fund. Okay, what time? <laughs> why, are, why is he not asking bucket? No, I'm the one asking why. Why is he not asking why? <laughs> so, to make the long story short, she brought the money and I gave it to the accounting. Then it so happened that I was in the office of CCF, as in chit chatting with my D group leader, Pastor Irwin, who is seated in front of Pastor Peter's office. So Pastor Peter came out and said, Hi, Bong, how are you? I'm good, sir. How did you come here? Why are you asking? <laughs> Why did you come here? How did you come here? Well, uh, I commute, sir. Why? Don't you have a car? Oh, I have one. My wife is using it. Oh, it's not easy to have no car if you don't have car to minister. Okay, he called the administrator. You know, he didn't even remember this anymore when I shared the story. He just called the administrator and said, Hey, you, Edwin, you buy him a car to be used in the ministry. I go, oh, grabe naman. And alam nyo, they, they, they asked me, oh, what kind of car do you want? These are actually the options. Okay, okay. Uh, okay for the black one. <laughs> <laughs> and so I promised God for the plans that I have for the amortization until the building is done, I will give that monthly. Can you imagine? God provided it in a very different way. But I trusted Him for it. You know, I'm saying, you save not, for, not to become you know, greedy. You save because it is necessary. Okay? Okay ba? No, I still have other points. Layo pa niyan. Sabi niya, 10 more points daw. Remember this, develop your business first before building your house. Yeah, ang galing na si Samuel Lord. Before you build the house, it's very practical. Develop first your business. In other words, your ability to, to keep the house, to maintain the house. Earn first. It's like also saying, before you get married, make sure that you have enough to establish your family. Diba? God is very practical. He will not tell you to do something that you cannot maintain. Kaya winning a lottery and buying a house with that winning does not make you any guarantee that you will be able to maintain the house. Kaya many, after buying, they could not maintain it anymore, then they will get poor again. Di ba? So learn to invest what you have. This is from the Bible. In several different places because you don't know what disasters might happen. Money that comes easily, easily disappears. Di ba? I mean, it disappears quickly. But money that is gathered little by little 
will grow. Okay? Are you following? So God is teaching us, use your money wisely. There's nothing wrong to invest, but don't just invest for money for quick, ano, 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 quick, get rich weekly, ano, get rich, ah, ganun, ganun yun. Quick, get, <laughs> quick, rich, ano, scheme. Di ba? Parang get, as in you want to get rich fast. Don't enter into that kind. In, in other words, ito yun, no? whenever somebody offers you that if you invest, you will earn 10% on a monthly basis, don't trust that guy. That's a scammer. Nakuha ninyo? Huwag kayo mahulog sa ganun. Okay? Relax lang kayo. Little by little is better. Okay po? Good. Now, letter L, lay out your spending plan. So, Plan your spending. You see, we must plan our spending. We should save our money faithfully. We should honor God first. We keep good records. Then plan your spending. Don't just keep on spending. This is a principle of budgeting. Diba? Sabi ng Bible, plan carefully and you will have plenty. If you act too quickly, you'll never have enough. Diba? Those who are impulse buyer, that's not a good practice. Yeah, when they were telling me, okay, you go shopping. Trust me, we don't go shopping. But hindi kami ganyan. Parang that's not our priority. When we go to different countries, our priority is not to go and shop. In fact, whenever I shop, for example, in Japan, I would always go to the second hand, second hand store. Bakit? Kasi doon mura. Ah, Nakuha nyo? Hindi masama yun. Second hand store, as long as it's working. Okay ba tayo dyan? Okay, good. Now, live on a budget. Learn to live, but this is the point. Don't, ano, don't live or don't buy beyond your means. Not even within your means. Always below your means. Bakit? Kasi kung ano yan, within your means, break even. Below your means, you will have savings. Okay ba? Nagkakatindihan tayo? Oh, good. Then, of course, learn to live on a budget. One, one is living, not just planning a budget, but living it. You have to live within the budget. Minsan, they make a budget, but they ignore it after a while, after having those budgets. No, you live within that budget. Okay? Kaya plan carefully, and you will what? Have plenty. If you act too quickly, you'll never have enough. Now, good planning and hard work lead to what? Prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Okay, when you get home, iba sa atin, we don't want to get vacation na at, in the Philippines because we're thinking we'll be spending much. Don't be pressured to bring homecoming gifts. Diba? Pinaghirapan nyo yan. Wag yung parang, oh, pasalubong, pasalubong. Everything must be purposeful. Okay ba yan? Wag kayo ma-pressure. Doon, I get pressured to get pasalubong for all those ano, Filipinos waiting for you as if they're excited for your coming. No, they're just excited for your gift. Wag, relax ka lang. Pagdating lang, oh, kamusta? I miss you. Ay, subukan mo, walang padala. Next time, they will not go to the airport anymore. <laughs> well, at least, no more pressure. Di ba? So setting up, then if you, ano, if, you, ano, if you loan something, always set up a repayment pay. Never run away from your obligation. Kasi the Bible is saying, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is your power to do it. Let no debt remain outstanding. Remember, the wicked borrows and they never pay. Okay po? Christians, oh, I, oh no. We don't steal, but we don't return what we borrowed. <laughs> oh, mag- masama yon. Ayaw ni Lord yon. And finally, make a will. You see, we also pray that somehow we can leave something to uh, the next generation. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children. Diba? And the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Okay ba yan? Kaya, okay, so learn to track your cash flow. Keep good records. Ang tawag dito, the law or the principle of accounting. Track your cash flow. Ano yung mga cash flow? How much you earn? How much you spend? Di ba? How much you save? You 
track your cash flow. Understand where it's going. Diba? Where it's coming, where it's going. You have to track all of those. Until we learn to do this, we're never going to worry about our needs. Okay? Yung debit credit, yan. Important yan. But if you don't understand debit credit, no problem. As long you have money to come and you spend it properly. Okay po? Now, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, as I said. Riches can disappear fast. So watch your business interests closely. Know the state of your flocks and herds. During that time, their primary, primary business is agriculture. So that's the, how they measure their wealth. So you need to know where your money is going and where your money is coming. You need to track those ano, flows. Okay ba yan? Para alam mo, parang hindi ka nabibigla. Kaya your money can be gone in a flash at it has grown wings and flown away like an eagle. Maybe to some of you, you have experienced this. Upon receiving your salary, biglang, oh, four gifts, five gifts. Parang, oh, lahat, everybody flew, everything flew. Diba? Parang as if it was gone in a wind. Diba? Kaya be careful. And finally, finally, have a godly celebration. You know, God wants us also to enjoy our money. Some people, they're no longer eating their lunch to save money for their hospitalization. <laughs> no, crazy, no? I don't know. Enjoy, your, enjoy God's blessing. There's nothing wrong to enjoy God's blessing. Once in a while, diba? enjoy. Yeah, plan carefully and you will have plenty. Look at this. Diba? Furthermore, as for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth, he has also empowered him, look at the words, to eat from them and to receive his reward and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. Hindi naman parang kain ka, peanut butter na lang. Why I'm saving. <laughs> the moment God prospers you, once in a while you celebrate. I'll give you a principle. Here's what you do. Most, of, most people, they do this. They spend it, then worry about it, then repay it, save it, and give it. This time, you reverse it. First, you dedicate it to the Lord. Lord, this man is yours. Then you tight it. You know, first, then you save it. The at least, set aside na. If it's already been set aside, let's say with the remaining 80% or 70% of your income, you then use to repay it. Then, enjoy it. Don't reverse the process. Iba, nag-enjoy agad eh. Diba? Pagkatapos sa enjoyment, wala na! <laughs> Kawawa! Kawawa! Di ba? Kaya we need to learn to put God first. Now listen to this. Look at this. The, the reason why I'm sharing this with you, this is not an easy thing to do unless you really recognize that God is your God and not money. Unless God is really the, our master, we can never do this. It's not that simple. Because sometimes we are too much focused on what we can get, so we are no longer enjoying it. Sometimes we just too much focus on our pleasure, so we spend all of it. But when we focus our eyes on God, we would be relaxed knowing that He is our provider. Amen? So shall we just bow down our heads and close our eyes? Friends, is God really your master? The Bible says you cannot serve God and wealth at the same time. You can just choose one. You can only serve one. Either you will love one and hate the other, or we cannot do it both. Either you will love God and hate wealth, or you will hate God and love wealth. And how would you know? Are you always worried? Are you always stressed in accumulating money? Friends, if you have not found real peace and comfort from the fact that God is your God and He is your provider and He is your Father, I pray that today, before we end, I pray that may you be reconciled with God. Jesus Christ died for you. He wants you to be reconciled with His Father. He wants you to be His friend. He wants you to be given the right to become His child. If you are not sure about your relationship with God, God is asking you now, I know that you're tired. Come and I will give you rest. 
Learn from me for I am humble and meek. And friend, if God is speaking to you, please be humble enough to raise your hand to God and say, God, Lord, I accept your offer to be your child. I believe in you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be reconciled with you. Lord, I give my life to you now. Friends, if that if God is speaking to you, just raise your hand to the Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, be humble. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father God, thank you, Lord, for these hands raised. For those who raise their hands, you say, Lord, forgive me for trusting myself more than trusting you. Forgive me for trying my best, Father God, to gain wealth on this world instead of trusting you, Father God, for my provision that in that I can experience the real wealth that comes from you. So, Lord Jesus, take control of my life. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your promises, for they're indeed true and faithful. Thank you, Lord. Father in heaven, I pray for everyone in this room, every family we represent. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we will always be, Lord, faithful to obey you. And grant us, Father God, the courage to follow your instruction and experience the true wealth that comes only from you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless.